But isn't it cool to be in the audience when you're not even expecting to see greatness? Isn't it cool to be in the audience when you're not, when you're not even sure, like you're like, wait, am I at a show all of a sudden? Has this ever happened to you? In a normal setting, in a normal setting, you're like, uh, you're like on a shuttle bus, and all of a sudden you realize you're in the audience of a great performer. Has this ever happened to anybody else? I, I, I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. I get home from a long flight. I collapse in that terminal shuttle thing, taking me to my car. I can't get there quick enough. I'm laying there just so tired. And all of a sudden the door shuts, and I don't realize until just a moment later that I'm on TJ, the shuttle driver's performance night. She shuts the door, and all of a sudden over the intercom, well, hello everybody, and welcome back home to the Salt Lake City Airport. We're gonna take you to your car, and we're gonna get you to your house, and we're gonna have such a great time. But until we get there, I want everybody's help, and I'm gonna need to get it going on, because I need everybody to help me before I can put it into drive, and I need everyone to say yee-haw! No, no, we didn't do that. Thank you, though. Thank you. We didn't do that. We were like... I'm a motivational speaker, and I was like, shut up. <laughs> I took me to my car. No one played along, because we were a bad audience. But she learned a long time ago that failing frequently equals success. Well, everybody, I guess you didn't hear me. I guess you don't want to get to your car tonight. So if you want me to put it in the drive, you want to get to your car, I need everybody to help me out, and as a team, we're going to say yee-haw! Yeah, I go, yee-haw. She goes, well, all right. <laughs> Starts driving through the shuttle parking lot. You know that place, the long-term parking. She had five minutes with us. She knew that was all she had, but this was her show. She had no light. She had no real stage. This just was her performance. Just like all of us in this audience are performers. And as we're stuck with this woman in a captive audience, she started to tell us jokes that made no sense. And she was like, why did the chicken cross the road? Because it was there. <laughs> and we're like, what the heck has happened? And she kept going, yee-haw, yee-haw, we're going to the car, yee-haw, yee-haw. Pulled up, a lady was standing there waiting to get on the shuttle. This little four-foot-nothing put it into park, ran off the shuttle, grabbed two bags, threw them on, said, welcome to the shuttle. The lady walked on like, what's going on? And we went, yeehaw. <laughs> she goes, hi, okay. And so now we start to get into it because we're an audience. We're now part of the team. Now, TJ, she's making us laugh. We're high-fiving. We're having a good time. I said to her and by the end of the drive, I said, hey, my stop's up here. What's your name again? She said, TJ, I'm a shuttle driver. And I said, yeah, you are. You're the world's best shuttle driver. And I took out my phone, and I took a picture of her, and I said, you're the world's greatest shuttle driver. And she smiled and kind of, you know, shyly said, well, yeah. <laughs> ha. I want to think about how often we are in an audience like that and how often we give appreciation to those that we see that are great, that are keeping a promise like TJ, the shuttle driver. How often does this happen? Because we all work, we all have jobs, we all have teams that we're with. It's a family. Do we treat them as such? Do we give them the recognition they deserve? 